I found my passion and an unlikely friendship with my best friend. Hey there, I'm Kathy. Let me tell you about my best friends Sophie and me, two unlikely pals who've been through it all together. Our story is one of heartache, laughter, and the power of true friendship. Buckle up and join us on this wild ride. I've always been an outsider in my family. It seemed as if everyone around me was born with a natural knack for academics, always excelling in school and everything they put their minds to. My parents were both renowned scientists, and my siblings weren't far behind, showing incredible promise in their respective fields. It was a family of geniuses, and then there was me. My mother had high expectations for all of her children, but somehow, I never quite fit the mold. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't a complete failure, but I just wasn't as passionate about academics as the rest of my family. It was as if I were missing the genius gene. It didn't help that my mother was constantly comparing me to my older sister, who was on her way to becoming a doctor. To correct my lack of enthusiasm for academics, my mother decided to hire private tutors for me, hoping they would ignite a spark of interest. But no matter how hard they tried or how patient they were, I just couldn't seem to find the motivation to excel in my studies. This disappointed my mother greatly, and I could feel the weight of her disapproval bearing down on me. Then, one day, my life changed. Our next-door neighbors, the Johnsons, had recently moved away, and a new family was moving in. My mother, ever the social butterfly, invited them over for dinner to get acquainted. Little did I know, that would be the day I'd meet Sophie. Lydia, the new neighbor's mom, came over with her daughter, Sophie. She had a quiet and shy demeanor, almost as if she was scared to interact with the world around her. I couldn't help but be intrigued by her. She seemed so different from anyone I'd ever met before. As the evening progressed, I did my best to strike up a conversation with her, trying to break through her walls of shyness. It wasn't easy, but eventually, she started opening up. Little by little, we began talking more and more, and I found myself growing more and more curious about this mysterious girl. There was something about her that drew me in, and I was eager to learn more about her. What I didn't know then was that this chance encounter would lead to a friendship that would change my life forever. As the weeks went by, Sophie and I started to spend more and more time together. We discovered that we both attended the same school, which was only a short walk away from our homes. I began to notice that, despite her initial shyness, Sophie had a unique perspective on life that I found incredibly fascinating. One morning, as we walked to school together, I asked her about her interests and hobbies. To my surprise, she mentioned that she loved writing poetry and reading fantasy novels. I had never been much of a reader myself, but her passion for literature was contagious. Before long, we were exchanging book recommendations and discussing our favorite authors. It was through these conversations that I began to see a whole new side of Sophie, one that was intelligent, creative, and insightful. As our friendship continued to grow, I couldn't help but wonder why someone as brilliant as Sophie would be so quiet and withdrawn. It seemed like she had so much to offer the world, yet she kept herself hidden away. I became determined to help her come out of her shell and embrace her potential. One day, after school, I invited her over to my house to hang out. We were having a great time, laughing and talking about our favorite movies when I noticed that she kept checking her phone. I asked her if everything was okay, and she hesitated for a moment before explaining that her mother, Linda, was very overprotective and worried about her constantly. As I got to know Sophie better, I began to notice more and more of Linda's strange behavior. Whenever I went over to their house, she would hover around us, watching our every move. When Sophie and I would make plans, Linda would always find some reason for her to cancel at the last minute. It was clear that Linda didn't trust me, but I couldn't understand why. One night, when I was staying over at Sophie's house for a sleepover, I finally got some answers. After Linda had gone to bed, Sophie opened up about her mother's past. She told me that her mom had a difficult upbringing and struggled with trust issues as a result. Linda's experience had made her overly protective of Sophie, and she was wary of anyone who got too close to her daughter. 
As I listened to Sophie's story, I couldn't help but feel a mix of sympathy for Linda and determination to help Sophie break free from her mother's overbearing influence. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I was committed to doing whatever it took to help my friend. And, as it turned out, that would mean embarking on an adventure that would test our friendship like never before. As Sophie and I continued to spend time together, our bond only grew stronger. We walked to and from school together every day, and our conversations ranged from our shared love for fantasy novels to our dreams for the future. We even started a little book club of our own, meeting at each other's houses to discuss the latest novel we were reading. At school, I discovered just how brilliant Sophie truly was. She excelled in every subject, especially English and history, and it wasn't long before teachers and classmates alike began to take notice. To my delight, the more recognition she received, the more her confidence grew. It seemed that my efforts to help Sophie come out of her shell were starting to pay off. Our friendship became a beacon of light in my life. Sophie's intelligence and wit were inspiring, and I found myself working harder in school, driven by a newfound desire to live up to her example. It was as if her passion for learning was contagious, and I couldn't help but catch it. We quickly became inseparable, and I cherished every moment we spent together. As we navigated the ups and downs of high school, Sophie and I faced countless challenges, both individually and as friends. We experienced the typical teenage drama, from crushes and heartbreaks to the pressures of maintaining our grades. But through it all, we leaned on each other for support, and our bond only grew stronger. In time, Sophie and I became known around school as the dynamic duo, the quiet, brilliant girl and her outgoing, athletic best friend. Our contrasting personalities seemed to balance each other out, and I found myself truly grateful for the unique friendship we shared. However, despite our close bond, there was still the looming issue of Sophie's overprotective mother, Linda. Her constant interference and reluctance to let Sophie out of her sight put a strain on our friendship at times, but we did our best to work around it. I understood that Linda's behavior was rooted in fear and past traumas, but I couldn't help but feel frustrated by her unwillingness to let Sophie grow and experience life. As we entered our junior year of high school, Sophie and I found ourselves facing an unexpected challenge that would test the limits of our friendship and force us to confront the issue of Linda's overprotectiveness head-on. And it all started with a simple invitation to a concert. One day after school, I excitedly told Sophie about an upcoming concert featuring one of our favorite bands. I had managed to score two tickets and couldn't wait to experience the music and electric atmosphere together. However, as soon as I mentioned the concert, I could see the worry in Sophie's eyes. She knew that convincing Linda to let her go would be nearly impossible. Despite her concerns, Sophie agreed to ask Linda for permission. I could see the hope in her eyes, and I wanted more than anything for her to be able to experience this with me. We spent days preparing for the conversation, coming up with potential objections and how to address them. When the day finally came for Sophie to ask her mom, I held my breath, waiting for her response. To our surprise, Linda hesitantly agreed, though she insisted on several strict conditions. Sophie had to check in with her every hour, and she made it clear that this was a one-time exception. We couldn't believe our luck and eagerly made plans for the big night. The concert was everything we had imagined and more. The energy in the venue was electric, and for a few hours, we were able to forget about our troubles and lose ourselves in the music. We danced, laughed, and sang our hearts out, creating memories that would last a lifetime. But our happiness was short-lived. On our way home from the concert, we decided to take a shortcut through a dark alley. As we hurried along, Sophie tripped and fell, badly injuring her ankle. Panicking, I called an ambulance and stayed by her side until help arrived. Sophie's injury was severe, and she ended up being hospitalized for several days. Linda and my mother were furious when they found out about the incident, and both blamed me for what had happened. The tension between our families grew, and I could sense that our friendship was in jeopardy. During this difficult time, Sophie and I found solace in our shared love for literature. We exchanged letters filled with quotes from our favorite books, poems, and our own thoughts about life. 
These letters became our lifeline, helping us maintain our connection even as our parents tried to keep us apart. As Sophie recovered from her injury, I couldn't help but feel responsible for what had happened. I knew that our friendship had been tested, and I was determined to do whatever it took to help her heal, both physically and emotionally. In the weeks following the concert incident, Sophie and I were more determined than ever to strengthen our bond and prove to our parents that our friendship was worth fighting for. We continued to exchange letters, discussing our dreams and aspirations, and it became increasingly apparent that Sophie had a true gift for writing. One day, as I was browsing the internet, I stumbled upon a national writing competition for high school students. The grand prize was a full scholarship to a prestigious university's creative writing program. I immediately thought of Sophie and her incredible talent. I knew that this was the perfect opportunity for her to showcase her skills and pursue her dreams. I excitedly shared the news with Sophie, and after some initial hesitation, she agreed to enter the competition. We spent hours brainstorming ideas, discussing themes, and refining her submission. As the deadline approached, Sophie's piece took shape, a beautifully written, heartfelt story that perfectly captured her unique voice and perspective. Throughout this process, I couldn't help but notice Linda's continued animosity towards me. It seemed that no matter how hard I tried to prove myself, she was determined to see me as a negative influence on Sophie. As much as I wanted to understand her perspective, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to her hostility than met the eye. One evening, as Sophie and I were putting the finishing touches on her contest submission, I finally mustered the courage to ask her about her mother's disdain for me. Sophie hesitated for a moment before revealing a long-held secret, before our families became neighbors, Linda and my mother had been bitter rivals in college. Their animosity had carried over into adulthood, and Linda saw me as a reminder of her past failures and resentment towards my mother. I was shocked by this revelation but also saddened by the burden it placed on Sophie. It wasn't fair for her to be caught in the crossfire of a feud that had nothing to do with her. Despite this newfound knowledge, I was more determined than ever to help Sophie succeed and break free from her mother's shadow. Unfortunately, just as Sophie was preparing to submit her entry to the writing competition, Linda made a sudden and life-altering decision. She announced that they would be moving across the country to live with her sister, effective immediately. Sophie was devastated, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of loss and heartache as I watched my best friend pack up her life and leave. As I watched Sophie's family drive away, a profound sense of emptiness settled over me. My best friend, my confidant, my partner in crime, gone, just like that. In the weeks and months that followed, I found myself struggling to adjust to life without her. We kept in touch through letters and the occasional phone call, but it wasn't the same. I missed her more than words could express. Despite the distance between us, I remained committed to supporting Sophie's dreams. I constantly reminded her of the writing competition and encouraged her to submit her entry, even if it meant doing so from thousands of miles away. I believed in her talent, and I knew that this opportunity could be the key to unlocking her full potential. In the meantime, I focused on my own goals and aspirations. My passion for athletics had always been a source of pride and joy for me, and I threw myself into my sports with renewed vigor. I began competing in regional and national competitions, earning recognition for my skill and determination. Before long, I was offered a full athletic scholarship to a prestigious university, an opportunity one eagerly accepted. As I prepared for college, I also found myself developing an unexpected interest in poetry. Inspired by Sophie's love for the written word, I began exploring the works of various poets and even tried my hand at writing a few poems of my own. Through poetry, I found a means to express my emotions and experiences in a way I had never been able to before. One day, I received a letter from Sophie containing incredible news, she had submitted her entry to the writing competition and had won the grand prize. She would be attending the same prestigious university as me, thanks to the full scholarship she had been awarded. I was overjoyed, not only because my best friend would be joining me in college, but because she had finally been recognized for her incredible talent. As we both embarked on this new chapter in our lives, I couldn't help but feel a sense of hope and excitement for the future. 
We had overcome countless obstacles and had emerged stronger and more determined than ever to pursue our dreams. And although the scars of our past would always remain, I knew that together, we could face whatever challenges lay ahead. As Sophie and I began our college journey, it felt like a fresh start for both of us. We were finally free to pursue our dreams, unencumbered by the constraints of our past. For me, this meant dedicating myself to my athletic pursuits, as well as exploring my newfound passion for poetry. I was surprised to find that my love for poetry had continued to grow, and I even considered taking a few creative writing classes to develop my skills further. I found solace in the verses of my favorite poets and drew inspiration from their ability to capture the essence of the human experience. Through poetry, I discovered a way to express my own emotions and thoughts, giving voice to the complex inner landscape that I had never been able to articulate before. Meanwhile, Sophie flourished in her creative writing program. She quickly gained a reputation as one of the most talented and promising young writers in our university. Her professors and peers alike were in awe of her ability to craft powerful, evocative stories that resonate with readers on a deep level. It seemed as if her success was a testament to the power of friendship and determination, together, we had defied the odds and achieved our dreams. As our college years unfolded, we continued to support and encourage each other, both in our academic pursuits and our personal lives. We attended poetry readings, shared our latest literary discoveries, and spent countless hours discussing our favorite books and authors. Our friendship remained as strong as ever, and I was grateful for the unwavering bond that we shared. However, life has a way of throwing curveballs, and we were not immune to the challenges and setbacks that inevitably arise. In our junior year, Sophie received devastating news, her mother, Linda, had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. This diagnosis explained much of the erratic behavior and emotional instability that had plagued their relationship throughout the years. As Sophie grappled with this revelation and the implications it had for her family, I did my best to be there for her, offering a listening ear and a shoulder to cry on. We spent many late nights talking through her fears and uncertainties, and I marveled at her resilience and strength in the face of adversity. Through it all, I remained by her side, and our friendship continued to be a source of comfort and solace for both of us. We faced our challenges head-on, leaning on each other for support and drawing strength from our shared experiences. And as we approached the end of our college journey, I knew that no matter what the future held, we would face it together.